is an update on a concerning situation. The big uh, story, Ukraine, uh, for this whole week, but also with a particular focus for us here in South Africa that has to do with South African students who are stranded in Ukraine. And they are saying their train has been turned back. They were attempting to leave the country, which is under siege, as you know, by Russia's military. Let's get the latest from Vuvundonga, who is in Dubaini. Uh, we are also joined by Karabo Ramolefo, and the two of them are able to speak to us at the moment. Uh, ladies, thank you for your time. Um, and as you can imagine, concern on our part uh, for your safety. So let's start there before we get to talking about, you know, the journey that you were attempting to make. How are you doing? Well, to be honest, we are not fine at all. We are not fine at all. That's all we can say. We are not fine. Mm. Yeah, I don't think we can actually answer questions like, how are you doing at yeah. the moment? It's not part of our vocabulary for now. So, yeah. Absolutely. Difficult question to answer in times like these. So, and I'm pretty sure I'm mispronouncing the name of the place where you are. I'm saying Dubaini. Uh, you'll correct me there. But it's, it's a minor issue in the bigger scheme of things of where we are. You were attempting to make a journey by train from looking at the map I see that it's to the west of Ukraine. Tell me where you were coming from and where you were trying to get to, and then what happened? Well, we were coming from Kharkov city, as we've previously mentioned, and um, on our way, um, fortunate enough, last night we, able, we were able to board the train, and um, to our surprise, as we were traveling this morning, um, our train had to uh, take a detour and be turned back. And so the reason that being is um, there were um, apparent rumors that, you know what, there were bombings that were happening on the way. Um, therefore, we could not make... Um, um, that route anymore. We had to reroute and uh, take a different route uh, out of um, Ukraine. So right now, we really don't know what we're doing. We're kind of stagnant. We have stopped even now. So um, we just, um, it feels like a nightmare, honestly. we just in the middle of whatever, and we're just waiting to see what we can do. And uh, the officials on the train uh, are just trying to find out which route is the best to take at the moment, yeah. because um, it, it, right now it seems as if um, the, the bombings that are happening are not just happening at the military bases, but they have like um, intruded into where civilians live, and which means that also puts our own lives at danger. Um, we know that we're making a trip big, <laughs> all across the country from one point to the other. Mm. Um, however, it's a very risky one. We also feel like staying behind was also very risky. So we just chose our poison at this point. So yeah. Yeah. Vuvu, and, and, and you're right in pointing out that even from me looking at the map, it is really traveling across a country that is under heavy bombardment uh, with a lot of uncertainty and a lot of, you know, incidents that are flashpoints that are playing themselves out. Karabo, perhaps you can tackle that yeah. for me, uh, just talking about the anxiety of it all, because I imagine that at some moment when you were moving uh, with the train, you must have, you know, over a journey of several um, kilometers, I don't know how long it is, started to feel that perhaps there's a glimmer of hope. And I can imagine that you were shattered when you saw that, you know, you were not, you were not going to be able to make that crossing. Yes, well, of course, we were <clears throat> hoping that um, things are going to be okay, we are going to get where we're supposed to go so we can uh, escape this route. But then when we had to turn back, people were screaming, people were running, and we are inside the train. They, like there's nothing we can do inside the train. We have to stay there. Like anything can happen at any time, at any time. And then we had like to take another route. And it's even like, it's adding a distance. Like you don't even know what's wrong, what's going on. Even right now, the train has stopped. We don't even know mm. what's going on. The police are everywhere right now. We don't even know what's going on outside. Sure. And they can't leave. And we can't even leave or anything. We're just stuck inside the train right now. What are you doing for things like food and water? <laughs> That's a very funny question. Mm. What is food at this point? I mean, sure. like the last time we had a meal was Thursday when the bombing started. We haven't had anything to eat. We've had like a couple of biscuits that we took from our houses because that's what we had. The shops were closed. We couldn't buy anything when the morning started. And um, we've just been having a little bit of some water that we carried with us. However, we um, couldn't... Um, that's perfectly fine, yeah. 
yeah yeah so we we just had a little bit of some biscuits and some water which we have to also manage a little bit like by eating it sparingly because we don't know how long we're going to be here for and um we haven't had a proper meal we don't know what food is at this point so yeah Karabo, where, do you, do you, uh, and Vuvu, either one of you can tackle this. Do you have a specific idea of where exactly you are at the moment? Because, I don't know, I'm assuming that because you were in Dubaini, um, you were trying to get to Poland. And I think, Vuvu, when I spoke to you last night, that, that was the original intention, that if you can get to Poland, um, then that, that, that would be a, a position of safety. So do you have an idea where you are at the moment? Well, right now we are approaching uh, Tenapel a city called Tenapo. Like th things keep on changing. So right now uh, we are thinking of maybe going to Hungary or something like if things keep on changing at any time, at any moment. We don't, even, we don't even know where we are going even right now. Things we keep on have, changing. Yeah, we don't have a stable schedule right now. For now, we're just trying to get to the safest place possible. Um, we know that um, this whole interview is even about like sharing our experiences. But more than that, we want this to impact the South African government yeah. to awaken them to actually do something to help us. We understand that it, this is so important that everyone understands how frustrated we are. But at the end of the day, guys, we're in the middle of the war. We're middle in the middle of a war. It's dangerous. We're scared. Yeah. We are terrified, actually. Um, but we, that's not the point that we're trying to make. The point that we're trying to make is we want the South African government to get us out of here. We want yeah. them to stop laying on their hands and doing and, and you know giving us excuses like just get to the other side of the border. As you can see, we are facing so many challenges trying to get ourselves to the other side of the border. We are pleading the South African government to do something, get us out of here. We are citizens of South Africa, and this is our right. And even yeah. right now, uh, I've seen the headline that you guys showed that the government uh, tried to make us to uh, evacuate the, uh, this area like prior to the event. And that's not true. So even you guys are writing like a, a, sure. a, maybe like a fake like headlines, things that are things. <laughs> Karabo, I'm happy there, for you to correct that. I'm happy for you to correct mm -hmm. that, and I, I absolutely welcome it. The reason I do is that I know that, Vuvu, in some of your own sharing of your own experiences, you were saying that there was difficulty in you guys up and leaving Kharkiv because you are, medical, you are a medical student, and, and you know, it was in the middle of the term. And had there been a prior warning from the South African authorities that said, South Africans who are here, it's time to leave, uh, you would have done exactly that mm -hmm. and you would have been able to act according to that. But the university kept operating until the very last minute, right? The university kept operating like, until the very last minute. But however, we expect that from our university. They want the best of us. They want to build the best medical doctors out there. However, we are disappointed that the South African government sat down and watched other countries evacuate their citizens and they did nothing when we still had the time to evacuate. That is our biggest frustration at this moment. However, that means nothing to us because that's already been done. Our issue at the moment is we just want to be out of here. Can you at least make arrangements possible to get students across Ukraine, not just us? The students who are stuck in places like Odessa, in Kiev, in so many other cities within Ukraine, and they aren't able to get out either. We want the South African governments to take action, getting South African students as well as South Africans out of Ukraine. That is our issue at this moment. The least that you can do right now is to maybe uh, have a communication with the people in Hungary to let us in so we can fly from there and come back home. Let the people mm. in Romania to let us in so we can fly from there. Let the people in Poland to let us in so we can fly from there. Because uh, from what we're hearing uh, uh, from our fellow uh, national African nationalities, it's very difficult Like when you go to Poland, to Poland borders. Are, we are facing racism in Poland borders and all, all kinds of things. Mm. And, 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 and I think we must stay with that theme of South Africa's um, ability and diplomacy in these areas. Uh, the relationship with Russia, for example, has been touted over many, many years, right? That Russia historically mm -hmm. is a friend uh, of our current government and our country. Um, and if there's ever been a time, I would suggest, when that relationship to be, should be brought to bear, would possibly be now, uh, exactly. to at least afford mm -hmm. a safe passage of some sort. I know that Russia has a lot that yeah. they're dealing with in the battles that, the, you know, the, that they are waging in Ukraine, but I would imagine that mm -hmm. the paths for conversation are open. I don't know if you share the view that I, I, I hold in that regard. Absolutely, we agree with you. I mean, like, it shouldn't be for nothing that South Africa is part of BRICS. We have a long-standing relationship with Russia. 
why is our officials not using this as an opportunity to speak to Russian officials to get South Africans safely out of this place? We have the plain ground, guys. It's on our field. We can do what we want with it. Why are we just lingering around, acting like we haven't had this long-standing friendship with Russia as a country? That is my biggest issue. We are part of BRICS. Why aren't we just making some form of negotiation or talking to officials to get South Africans out of this place safely without them um, being, you know, bombarded by any form of uh, terrorism or attacks mm. at this point? Lastly, ladies, I don't know, you can both tackle this. Um, just the description of some of the people you are encountering on this journey, which on its own has now become uncertain whether it will lead to safety for you or not. Just the scenes and the people that you are encountering, the desperation, and perhaps what you've been seeing along the path, along the route, uh, as you've been traveling. Well, you know, as we've been traveling, we've just met just a whole vast of people. Other people have had worse experiences than us, if we're being honest. Um, we, we stopped by another place and two people boarded the train and all could, they could do is just start crying. And we assumed that, you know what, they've just been through the most uh, at that particular moment. Also, this is a public train. It's a, it's a public train. There's a, a whole lot of characters. We don't know if we're even safe in this place. We don't know if um, someone maybe could get something stolen from them. Someone could start a fight with another person as people are also frustrated and being, um, you know, being compacted and congested into one small environment. It's also very frustrating for the people that are within this place. So um, on our journey, we really did meet a, a lot of different characters. However, we all just... Uh, I, we're all just trying to focus on one goal in mind is the fact that all of us just want to get out of here, regardless of our nationality, regardless of our race. We all just want to be out of this place. When last did you hear from any official of the South African embassy in Ukraine? Because if we as news agencies can get hold of you from Johannesburg, I mean, it, it should be possible for an embassy uh, with the wherewithal um, of, of, you know, uh, diplomatic... Uh, I don't know, look, the situation is, is fluid and, and tense. It's difficult for them, I imagine, but I do imagine that they are still able to communicate. When last did you hear from them? Well, um, yes, today we spoke to Mr. Uh, Andre, which is our ambassador of um, South Africa in Ukraine. Um, he's been quite, he's been trying to be very helpful at this moment. There has been um, a little bit of frustrations. I mean, like he's also caught up in, in this war. So there's only so much he can also do on his part. Um, understanding the fact that, you know what, he's within the capital, Kiev, and it's also um, experiencing a lot of explosives at this moment as a lot of residential areas as well in that area have been targeted at this point. So we, we can only assume that he's also going through a very difficult period, just as we are. Um, however, we do appreciate the help that he's able to give us at this particular moment. We've also had uh, numerous South Africans across the board, which we're super, so much more grateful for. Thank you so much, you guys, for reaching out to us. People just asking us, are you guys okay? Do you guys need us to send you guys anything? Do you have a bank account? Those type of things are just so important to us, to helping us get um, all the South Africans that are here out of Ukraine. And we're so, uh, so grateful for that. Yeah. However, we do feel like there should be pressure pressed on the government once again to make sure that South Africans are getting out of Ukraine as safe as possible. Um, to be honest with you, it's there are other South Africans who are still stuck here. They will not get a train because trains are currently prioritizing Ukrainian citizens and we can't blame them for that. It's their country. It's nothing wrong with that. However, we feel like there should be pressure on the government to get South Africans out. Let them have a form of transportation that is available for South Africans to get them out of whatever city that they're in, out of Ukraine, everything prepared into a different country, maybe mm. Poland, wherever they, it is that they feel like is safest for South Africans to be as we evacuate and get ourselves home. We just want to be home. We want to see our families. We want yeah. to be home. Karabo, anything else that you would like to add before we conclude? Yes, uh, please, the last thing that I would like to add, please, 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 let, uh, please talk to the people in Hungary to open uh, the borders for us, people in Romania to open the borders for us, people in Slovenia to open the borders yeah. for us. That's all we need right now. Mm -hmm. All right, ladies, I've got to thank you once again for sharing so generously of this truly uh, difficult experience. And difficult is, is, is an understatement. But you have become, you know, our eyes um, and, and uh, our connection point uh, to this particular global story. It's easy to report it as a story that's playing itself far away and have the facts and figures and the bombs and the cities and mouth them off. 
but it's quite another thing when you see a person that you relate with and the local uh, connection to that particular story and issues uh, of South Africa's responsibility towards its own citizens before we can pontificate about uh, the geopolitics of it all. At the end of the day, the responsibility, I imagine, should be to you and your safe return. We will keep trying uh, to stay in touch with you. Uh, do, uh, I hope if you have access, uh, you will be able to recharge your devices so that we continue to keep South Africans updated on your situation, which, as I say, has, has become emblematic uh, of the experience of South Africans in Ukraine. All right, those were the two students there, Vuvun Donga and uh, Garabo Ramulefo, uh, on board a train uh, trying to get out of Ukraine. They do mention the efforts uh, of the South African ambassador to Ukraine, Andre Grunewald, but of course, as they say, and rightly so, there should be a lot more that is happening happening by way of securing uh, diplomatic channels and ensuring that there's a passage uh, that is afforded, uh, at least to South Africans. After all, we've been saying for years that Russia is our friend. So it's time to call in a favor, Cyril Ramapos. And not only in Russia, of course, the other neighboring countries, Poland, uh, Hungary, as the students were mentioning there, uh, all of those countries, it's time now to work those diplomatic lines.